Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yay. OK. So hello. My name is Cassidy. I'm going to be talking about uh, the view from the back, or the Vue.js from the back end. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk about just building a good, solid front end to complement your back end. Yay. OK. Um, so like I said, my name is Cassidy Williams. I'm a senior software engineer at a company called L4 Digital in Seattle. Um, I haven't been using Vue.js for very long, but I think it's very cool, and that's why I want to talk to you about it. Um, so, who are you? Um, this talk is mainly geared towards kind of like back-end developers who are sick of server-side rendering, or just people who are interested in client-side rendering in general because it's kind of a big deal. Um, that being said, why client-side rendering? Um, so these are like my main points of why it's super great. So first of all, with client-side rendering in general, there's not a full page reload required. Normally, like if you are using some kind of server-side rendering uh, framework, it's loading a new page every single time data is changed or just reloading a lot. With client-side rendering, that is not the case. It only reloads certain parts of the page and the certain aspects of the page that are needed. And so it's just nice and fast. Um, rich interactions are better supported instead of um, kind of having separate JavaScript on like the client and on the back end or things like that. You can kind of have it all in one area. Um, lazy loading. Um, lazy loading is nice and easy because um, just client side rendering handles it really well as you're scrolling uh, down a page like on Pinterest, for example, and like different pins are loading slowly but surely. That can be done on the client side while the back end is still loading the data. You can have the client still showing a good user interface without the users um, being interrupted. Um, ease of deployment, you don't have to build this giant monolithic repo um, to be able to deploy something to the cloud. You can kind of do that in a few short commands depending on your build process. Um, there's kind of a programmatically enforced separation of concerns with the back end and the front end. Um, it's you're kind of forced to have more of a services-oriented architecture, which we've been talking about APIs, APIs. Um, your back end will be more services-oriented, more API-oriented, so the front end can deal what it does with best, like all the user interactions and everything. Oop, I don't know what that was, excuse me. Um, and uh, the back end can deal with the gathering of data and the database. The, um, the UI doesn't actually talk to the database at all. It talks to the service that talks to the database. And so there's that separation of concerns. And then also, there's this also depends on your um, project in general or, or your uh, company, but it's the same code base across platforms. Because JavaScript is so nice and easy for people to learn, uh, relatively speaking, you can build desktop apps, you can build mobile apps, Ooh. Um, you can build uh, websites, you can build all kinds of different uh, native experiences all with the same code base, and you don't have to worry about um, the different experiences because it's all the same. So. What is Vue.js? Um, it is, quote unquote, the li a library for building interactive web interfaces. The official story from the creator of Vue.js, Evan Yu, is, I figured what if I could just extract the part that I really liked about Angular and build something really lightweight with all the extra concepts involved? Um, and so that, that is the main story, the official story of how it happened. Um, my side of the story, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie Pride and Prejudice or read the book. I really like it. And so, there are these two parties who are super judgy of each other. There's the React and the Angular. The React has JSX and the virtual DOM, and there's the Angular side that has templates and directives, and they look at each other and they just don't like each other at first glance. But then slowly as they get to know each other, their love blossoms, and then suddenly, <laughs> view appears from their love. I worked on that GIF longer than this entire presentation. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that is my side of the story of how Vue.js came to be. I'm pretty sure it's accurate. So anyway, why Vue.js? Um, first of all, it's very small. Relative to React and Angular, it's, uh, I forget the exact number of kilobytes that it is, but it's just very small in general and very fast to deploy. Um, it's just JavaScript. You don't have to deal with TypeScript. You don't have to deal with JSX. 
It's JavaScript. Um, it's very easy to set up. And my favorite thing is that errors are explicit. And so as I started to get to know Vue.js more and more um, and was typing things out, whenever I would have an error, it would tell me exactly what was wrong. And I wouldn't have to actually consult the documentation for like a half hour trying to figure out where the heck is this going wrong. It just tells you. And I think all errors should be this explicit. So why tell you this when I can show you? So I am going to attempt to live code an entire application in front of you right now. You can try to follow along if you'd like. Um, YOLO. OK, so um, let's do this. I am going to navigate to my GitHub repository. Um, can you all see that? Should I zoom in on the text a little more? I can do that a little more. Ignore my dragon. OK. So um, when you first want to start a Vue.js application, you can just install the uh, CLI for Vue.js. And so you can do npm install global view CLI. Dun, 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 dun. I think I already have it installed, but just in case, I'm going to just do this. Um, and so this view CLI will um, just automatically let you uh, create view applications from the ground up. And they have a bunch of templates available for you. Um, and it's super nice and easy. There is a hand raised. Which version of Node? I don't know. You can, I think it's, uh, which version of Node do I have? 3.10 is what I have. I'm not sure what that uh, loudness is, sorry. OK. So anyway, the view CLI. Now all of a sudden, I have access to this view command. So I'm going to do view init. And then I'm going to start with the webpack template. Um, so that way, I don't have to deal with webpack configuration in front of all of you. Um, and I'm just going to call this search NASA, because I'm going to pretend that my back end is NASA. OK, so now it's uh, building this template. I'm just going to call my project search NASA, project description, a Vue.js project. That's me. Um, sure, I'll install Vue Router. Um, no, don't lint my code. That'll take too long. Yes, give me tests. Some more tests? No, I don't need that. OK, cool. This has officially set up my project, and it is all done. So I can CD into my search NASA. And I have all of these um, directories and things all set up. npm install. So I'm going to install everything, and then I'm just going to run it. And hopefully, I can have a nice, quick hello world. Um, I like to think of a lot of things as the time to hello world. And Vue is really great, because it's just these quick like start application, and then click yes a few times, and then it's just done. Um, so yeah, I tried to come up with a lot of view puns that I could say while things were installing. And it just kept saying, like, hope you're enjoying the view. Um, and that's the best I got, so I'm sorry. OK, nice. Uh, oh, I did testing. I shouldn't have done that. But that's OK. This is live. We're doing it live. Um, so the, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create this application. I'll show you some like nice little things in Vue. Um, and then uh, once we have all the nice little things showing you what it can do, then we'll get into the meat of like adding NASA to this application. And so if I do npm run dev, starting a dev server, and wow, welcome to my Vue.js app. It exists. Aha. Um, and so it happened. That's great. I'm going to open a new tab here just to keep that running. Um, I'm going to CD into search NASA, zoom in a little bit. Um, now I'm going to open up Vim, because I use Vim. Um, now everything is structured fairly simply. There's an index.js with an app div. What's great about a lot of client-side uh, frameworks, especially with Vue, all you need is a div to make it run. The entire application can live in this div, and it's super, super nice. If I wanted to uh, like put something in here like hello, this would just appear on top of the entire application, but I'm not going to do that because I'm sure you believe me. Um, so what's great about Vue is this is the uh, setup right here. It, I think it's throwing errors at me. I'll do a, a nicer color scheme. Um, so it imports Vue, it Im just the entire framework. It imports the router, um, and then it has the app. And then this is it. Check it finds the app element that we have in that body. It's just hashtag app. Um, it's using the router, and then the main template for this app is right here, and it's a view a view file. 
And so um, the, view the view files consist of templates, scripts, and styles. And I'll show that to you in a second. And then the only component that it's using is app. And it imports app from the top. That's it. This is the like, top part of our application. Um, and so right now in the router, there's only one path, and it's just hello. And it's right here. The path at home is hello. And um, the component is hello. Let's look at that component. Wow. So um, like I mentioned before, there's a template at first. I'm actually going to take out some of this just so you can see the main part. We have hello, we have a script, and then we have a style. So um, in this, ooh, I'm going to put that div back. So first of all, what's nice about this setup is it live reloads. And so now that I've gone back to that, it just has welcome to your Vue.js app. Now let's just say I wanted to uh, create a new route or something. Unlike React Router or something like that, I don't have to use a link uh, element and have this whole fancy thing to set up my router. I can just use an A tag and I'll just do uh, href s and I'm going to say that that is a link to the Spanish version of this website. Go to Spain um, and do that. And so then what I can do is I'll create a new component. Where did I go? Um, so I'll do E, components, and then I'll call it ola.view. And um, I'm just going to copy all of this. Um, now, one thing that you might notice is that it has this message thing as the header. That message is coming from data down there in the script. And so um, whatever you pass into data, and you can have all kinds of different elements pa or all kinds of different values passed in to the actual template from the script. Um, you just pass it in through data, and then it happens. And so I could change this message to a different variable, and it would go in there. I could have all kinds of different things. But in here, I'm going to do, because this is going to be the Spanish, I'm going to do bienvenidos. Oh, bienvenidos a you. OK. Um, and then I'm going to call this one hola. OK. And I'm going to do, I'll just do English. So when I go here, this is just copying the same template as before, but I'm just, I just have these different links. Um, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do. OK. So now that I've created this template, the only thing I need to do to actually add it to um, to, uh, to add it to the uh, path is just add a route for it. And so I'll add this route, stick it in here. And um, I called my route ES for Spain. And I'll call it Ola. And then component Ola. Oh, and that reminds me I have to import it. Do that. Ooh. Super thrilling. So now that I've imported all of these things, created a new template, I can theoretically go to Spain. And it broke. Wait, why? OK. If I do that, no. OK. I'll figure this out. That's why it's live coding, people. It's, it's crazy stuff. OK. What if I add this little hashtag in there? Does that help? Oh, no. Okay. I don't know what you people are yelling at me, but I appreciate the help. I'm going to try doing, it looks like there was a hashtag in there. Hey, yay, so it's switching between these. Look, we're so international. Okay, so uh, th there's, Again, just quick basic routing example. But now that we've done that part, let's actually uh, do something that's more meaningful than just switching between two pages, as fun as that is. There's a question. The name and the component are almost always the same, yes. And um, I think that there are some differentiators there, and view throws errors. I tend to just keep them the same, because then I don't have to deal with it yelling at me. Uh, OK. Going back to that light theme. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create a home component, 
So I'm going to do E, and I'm going to call it home. Actually, I'll call it search, because that's kind of cool. Search.view. Wow, I can't type. OK, search.view. And then in the search.view, I'm just going to copy this template, because it's fast. Um, and I am going to create my NASA search engine. Whew, OK. So um, first, I'm just going to call this div search. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to add a nice little um, form in here. And this form is going to um, have an input element in there. And so I'll just do form slash form, throw an input, type equals text. And then I'm going to have placeholder text. And I'll just call it query. Um, and there you have it. I have a form. Um, and I'm going to call this search. Um, I probably don't need this message in there, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Um, so this is just a basic form element. Now, in order to attach certain things to um, like view features and elements, you use directives, a lot like Angular. And so what I can do is I can do um, form uh, uh, v on submit, and then it'll actually call a function that I run. And then you can also chain different commands, and so not just v on submit, but you can also do prevent. And so uh, kind of like how you prevent default often in JavaScript, you prevent it so that way it doesn't um, reload the entire page whenever you uh, submit a form. Uh, you can chain these events. So I have v on submit and prevent, and I'm just going to call that um, get uh, 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 get picks. I'll call it get picks. Um, and I'll just do that for now. Um, and also with the, uh, with the text here, um, I can bind whatever value this is to something else in the application by calling it a model. So v model, and then uh, just naming it whatever I want. I'm just going to call it uh, query. And then do that. And um, a quick example of how that works. I'm going to have. First of all, query is going to be blank. Um, but I'm also going to throw in um, just like a count just to show how this works. And I'll do count equals zero. Um, and uh, I'll do a quick button. And then button v dash on. Again, very much like uh, Angular. v dash on click. And I'm just going to do a little script in there. I haven't actually done this kind of counter before, so we'll see. We're doing it live. Um, and so you can call the value of count just right in here. And uh, I'll just do um, count plus plus. Let's see if we can do that. We might have to throw a function in there. But if, oh, I didn't add this to the router. Oops. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of hello and hola. Um, oops. And I'm just going to do import search from at components search. And then I'm just going to have the default path be search. And I'm just going to get rid of the Spanish thing that we did earlier. That was just an example. OK. So now that that is added in there, we have this query. Oh, and look, as I click the button, it is very small. The button number goes up. Wow, it's amazing. Um, and so again, the V model, uh, this V model uh, uh, count, uh, it can I just messed up my wording. V model is something that attaches something to another variable. But you don't necessarily need it if you just keep that variable like attached to the um, attached to the item itself. With the V model, you can then use it in a bunch of different functions and everything. But anyway, we don't need this button. OK. So now that we have this query, we're going to um, actually make an API call. But in order to make an API call, I'm going to need to install what's called view resource. So npm install view resource. And that's just a library that um, comes with view that handles all of your HTTP requests. Um, great. And I'm going to go back to Vim. And when I go to my search component, 
Um, for, I'm going in this script. I'm going to just add this section for scripts. So it's just called methods. When you want to add another, uh, uh, when you want to add methods to your Vue.js component, and I'm just going to call this method. Oh, get picks, right? Okay. So in get picks, I don't remember the exact syntax of the view resource, so I'm just going to copy. Um, and the documentation is very explicit for all of these. So it's just this HTTP get. It's very similar syntax to Angular. I usually use React, which is why that part is a little bit more new to me. And OK. So we have the this get and then some URL and then we use the response to do something. Instead of this dot sum data, I'm going to do this dot query equals response dot body. And then in this URL, I'm going to use uh, NASA and I grabbed this nice API call before from uh, the NASA stuff. NASA's APIs are all free and really cool. I highly recommend checking them out. Okay. And so um, this dot query is response dot body. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a div class equals results. And I'm just going to put all the results from everything in there. But I'm going to make it only appear um, with if. And I'm going to say I'm only going to have it appear if results exist. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's not this dot query, it's this dot results. And I'm going to use query to actually do the search. OK. So I have if this dot results, or if this, if results exists, then we go, and then this dot results is the result of the body. And then I'm also going to have a div, and this part is very uh, cool and Angular like, but v4, you can put this nice little loop inside the HTML. Um, so you do v4 and then uh, result in results. And then it just uh, makes this div for uh, each element in there. Oops, slash div. OK. And um, in there, I'm just going to, at this point, just write result, and we'll see what we get. OK. So let's hope that that works. I'm going to go to search NASA. And I'm going to just stick that in there. And nothing happened. Live coding. It's great. Let's find out what's in our console. Can't read property get of undefined. Oh, so I installed view resource, but I didn't actually add it to the application, which is a problem. So um, to actually add it to the application here, that red is very annoying. Um, so to add it to the application here, I'll just import uh, view resource from view resource. And that's all you need to do to install it. But then you actually have to tell view to use it once it's imported. And so you just do view.use view resource. Crazy stuff. OK, so now it's actually using the view resource. And so theoretically, if I do that, Something should happen. Hey, the word result appeared. So that means that we're actually getting results. I'm not displaying it, but the query happened. And so uh, let's actually do something with that query rather than just writing the word result every single time. Um, so what I first can do is if I wrap this in here, then I actually get the variable result rather than the word result. And wow, I get so much JSON. That's ridiculous. OK, let's make that a little prettier. Um, so in that JSON, we have href, and we have metadata and stuff. OK. So it looks like what I want is links. So I'm going to do results.links.0. And see if that gets me something. Hey, it does. Great. And um, result.links.0. And then I think instead of response.body, I'm just going to do response and see what that gets me. That might change what that response looks like. It does. OK. 
I think I parsed this weirdly, so I'm just going to make sure that I do that. This is not the part of you that you need to see. Okay. Oh, wait. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. So in there, I'm going to, I'm just going to do this parsing here. I'm going to do response dot, what was that? Collection dot metadata. Metadata. And then I think I can call for links because cannot read metadata of undefined. I know nothing. It's fine. Hmm. Okay. I promise this will work. It worked before. It will work again. So we get results. And we get href, we get items. Oh, items is probably it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting into the array. I really should have done the JSON parsing part before this, but I wanted to do it all from scratch live. And so uh, this is the joy of development, people. I even took notes, and it said, you should really parse it beforehand. <laughs> so, <laughs> dang it. OK, I never listened to myself. OK. All right, let's mess with this. So we have result, we're not, we don't need the metadata. We do need, feel free to start screaming if you see something that I'm missing. I'm gonna just do response.body really quick. Okay, that gets us that. We need to go to response.body and then we get items. No, we'd get data from there. We're getting a big description. You know what, let me, Let's see. So we know that there's an image in there. We get all this stuff. This is the joy of development, people. You never know what you're going to get. I love live coding. Um, I also have two minutes to finish this. Oh, no. Um, dot links. Let's see. Dang it. Response.body.data. And then link is an element of that. Thank you, everyone. You're the true hero. Hmm. Now it's just not doing it at all. I can't hear you. <laughs> So we have response.body and then dot. Wow, this is really not a fun part of the demo. I'm sorry about this. But I promise this would work. And you can see the joy of view as it's actually getting this data really quickly. It's just not parsing it because nothing parses JSON unless you're a human who can just iterate through things. Dot items, dot links. I'm listening to you. OK. No, can't. OK. Ooh, my entire screen is spazzing. <laughs> I'm not meant to do this. OK. Is that, is that Twilio kicking me off stage? <laughs> well, Link. If, if you can't get property links of undefined, that means items is undefined. You know, I'll push this on GitHub, and you can see the parsing, and I promise it'll be super real and super good. Um, but anyway, that is Vue.js. My time is up. Uh, that being said, if you would like to chat with me more and tell me how I should improve my live coding by, actually, by doing a lot better, um, Feel free to tweet me and say, yo, get better. Um, I know that there are surveys in the back where you can bash my live coding skills. Um, and they told me to tell you to please return the pens after you fill out the survey. Um, and uh, yes, my username is Cassidu on GitHub. And I'll be pushing this online right away as soon as I figure out the parsing. I guarantee it's going to be something stupid. Um, and thank you so much.